Hello, friends. It's Kat from Yam Yam Kapow. Between the years of 2006 and 2009, I attended the University of the Arts in Philadelphia for college, majoring specifically in digital illustration and unofficially minoring in a whole slew of other things, such as photography and bookbinding. As you may have noticed, I have a bit of an insatiable appetite when it comes to learning. In the process, I racked up over $100,000 in debt, gained and lost friendships and family, and walked out possibly as confused if not even more so about what I wanted to do with my life. Although I think those last two were largely due to my own nature rather than art school itself. Nonetheless, the question remains, was it worth it? I guess to understand my thought process, you'd need to know a little bit more about my history with art. I talked about it in the My Art Journey So Far video, but I essentially grew up with little to no art classes. In some schools I went to, like middle school, it was an elective and I chose chorus over art because I knew I liked singing but didn't know I liked art. Other schools simply didn't have it as an option at all. In high school, I went to a vocational technical high school, which is essentially just a place where they focus on teaching you trade skills like welding and culinary arts and put less emphasis on pretty much anything else. There were zero art classes available in that school with one singular exception. Somehow, I managed to accidentally fall into graphic design in there, an art form that I'm decent enough at but that I truly do not like. It did teach me that I like illustration and traditional printmaking methods, though, and that class and teacher alone are the reason I ended up in art school at all. So think about it this way. I went to art college with no real art background. I'd been doodling in sketchbooks for three or four years at that point, and every now and then my graphic design assignments would include an illustrative element, but I otherwise was a relatively blank canvas. I think, possibly, the number one reason I ended up going to art school was because my graphic design teacher told me that I couldn't. For whatever reason, she told me I'd never hack it because they'd give out assignments like draw 100 noses in a night, and there was simply no way I'd be able to do something like that. The surest way in the world to get me to do something is to tell me that I can't. So that night I went home and drew 100 noses and cockily slammed my completed fake homework down on her desk the next morning. I don't really know if they were done well, but gosh darn it if they weren't technically done and I proved to both of us that I could hack it, if I wanted to. But see, I'd entered that Votech high school because I didn't want to go to college. In fact, my admissions essay was centered entirely around the premise that I needed to acquire trade skills because I didn't intend to pursue higher education. So the normal admissions window came and went and I graduated high school with no aspirations higher than working at both the burrito joint and sandwich shop I was already employed at. I've never had a clear direction as far as where I want to go and what I want to do is concerned. Not for lack of wanting to do things, but for lack of wanting to do only one thing. It turns out I'm a multi-potentialite or a renaissance man and I'm basically blessed and cursed to always crave more knowledge, more skills, and more experiences. I'll never be able to settle and do one thing for very long, especially because the second it starts to feel easy is the second that I no longer get the pleasure from the craft that my brain craves. Unfortunately for me, Rolling burritos is hella easy, so within a couple of months of doing that full time, I suddenly got the itch to apply to art school. On a whim, I applied to the University of the Arts and was admitted to their spring semester, meaning I essentially started half a year later than the rest of the people in my year. It was tough. I mean, real tough. You know those 100 noses I drew? That was essentially nothing compared to the anatomy teacher who had us draw two scale, 100% accurate models for all of the bones in the human body, as well as all the muscles. She was absolutely insane and could spot the slightest mistake in any work and worked us like an absolute taskmaster. I probably learned more from her than any other teacher and kind of adore her mild cruelty. As someone who came into the art world basically ignorant of everything, going to art school was one of the biggest eye-openers I could have ever been gifted. In my first year, I learned about tonality and basic color theory and how to build a table out of a sheet of plywood and a 2x4 and how to carve stone, the proper consistency for acrylic paints, contour drawing, perspective and scaling, and so many, many, many other things. Suddenly, a whole new world of creativity was opened up to me that I didn't even know existed. Seriously, I know for a fact that there are elementary school kids who have more artistic knowledge than I did when I started my freshman year of college. My greedy mind and hands ate it all up and I threw myself desperately into any craft I could weasel my way into. I studied film noir, singing, and sculpting while trying to find a way to fit glass blowing and jewelry making into my schedule. 
Spoilers, those last two never made it into the rotation, but I would have absolutely loved them. For someone like me, who either has no real existing foundation of art but is boundless in their creativity, or someone who craves to try every single thing at the buffet of life, having so many skilled artists in one place to leech knowledge from was completely transformative. I learned so much about what I didn't know I didn't know, and that's kind of an incredible thing. I'd say it was invaluable, except that there actually is a value placed on it. Which brings me back to the one real problem. Cost. At the time that I went to UArts, my tuition overall was about $100,000. And yes, I had a few scholarships here and there, but definitely not enough to cover a sizable chunk. If you remember back a minute or two ago, I said I didn't want to go to college, which means I put no real thought into the long-term effects of paying for a higher education. Given that I went to a school that actively discouraged college application in favor of going straight into the field, I wasn't really surrounded by resources or information that would have made me consider more than one knee-jerk option. I also didn't anticipate the financial collapse right before I was set to graduate, which meant that an already struggling artistic market was even more dicey to get into. I got out of college and the only job I was able to get at all anywhere was as an overnight baker for $10 an hour. I sent out hundreds of resumes, went on any interviews I could, and still was unable to afford any of my loan payments once they kicked in. So I didn't pay them. Straight up just couldn't, really. I don't want to get into it, but I sort of found myself briefly without a home and without a family, and paying some loans for an education I wasn't using was not on my priorities list. Don't worry. It's mostly all worked out in the end, and I love the people I love now, and they love me back. Life is never boring, but I can confidently say it's better now. The problem with not paying back money you owe is that they always send someone out to bust your kneecaps for stiffing them. In the government's case, that means that my wages were garnished heavily and all of my tax returns were seized for years. 30% of each of my paychecks was seized for loan repayment and 30 for taxes. This means that, at best, I saw 40% of whatever I actually earned at any job. And if you work in a different state than you live and your tax returns get seized, well, good luck finding a way to pay back $900 every year when you don't have it. Anyone who's ever obsessively checked their bank account to make sure that they still have those last 23 cents knows how unbelievably stressful this is. So, monetarily? No, art school was not worth 100 grand. Not by a long shot, despite the fact that the experience completely changed my life for the better and woke me up to so many things I am completely, eternally grateful for. It gave me a taste of so much that I never knew I craved, and to this day, I credit it with quite a lot of who I am and why I can do what I can do. But if it cost less than that? Oh, heck yes, art school is worth it. But the problem is, that's not really how this whole thing goes. Thankfully, there are alternatives. Some community colleges have art classes, but they aren't a completely immersive environment. You can take specific subjects like photography and illustration, but you won't get a foundational year where you're able to try a little bit of everything and get introduced to options you never even knew to consider. There are also some smaller schools, like the Delaware College of Art and Design, that are essentially a two-year, less expensive option that then allow you to spend your last two years of college at a different school, but take your first two years at a comparatively reduced cost. Though, given that you're watching this video now, you may very well know that there are cheap and or free methods of learning out here on the internet. My years at UArts introduced me to some subjects and gave me hands-on experience with instructors who were able to personally guide me. But I never really felt as though I was able to dive as deep into topics as I have been since discovering YouTube and Skillshare. There is something absolutely irreplaceable about learning something from someone in person, especially if you're able to directly discuss a craft with them in the moment, but I'm starting to think that there's more than one way to learn all this. If you're not able to afford going to college to get that introductory experience, or you've already been lucky enough to receive a robust artistic introduction in pre-bachelor education, why not use these digital resources at your fingertips? I've learned more and more skills over the last two years just from watching videos than I ever could have dreamed of, and through the internet I've learned that there are plenty of people out there who take pride in a craft they either learned or invented on their own. You don't need an art degree to make art, all you really need is know-how. So why not consider using the internet as a tasting plate, where you nibble on a bit of this craft or that craft here and there, find out which are your favorites, and then specifically seek out further education in those topics. Maybe that means paying for a course at whatever university has that knowledge available. Or maybe that means finding local craftspeople that specialize in that field and apprenticing for them. In arts, especially, 
higher education isn't required. Unless you want to work for a corporation that hires you based off of the fact that you have a degree rather than the fact that you have skills. In which case, I mean, good luck to you. I've done that and was miserable, but that's a whole different beast. What this all comes down to was yes. Despite all the pain and suffering, art school was specifically worth it to me because I had no knowledge whatsoever to really build upon and needed to get the foundation kicked into me. I would be happier if it had cost way, way less, but I can't say I regretted even a single moment of it. I am who I am because my life has shaken out the way it has, and I don't really want to imagine what an alternative version of me could have been like. But for you? Well, if you can find a way to avoid paying a boatload of money for an art education, I'd highly recommend doing so. You may not enjoy the journey of trying to come to terms with the stressful and unpredictable aftermath. Lord knows that's not a journey I particularly liked being forced on. Oh, and for the art in this video, as always, all the materials are listed down in the doobly-doo. I've been trying to reconnect with some of the skills I learned back in college, like more realism and more shading, so this topic has been floating around in my mind. If you went to art school, I'd love to hear your thoughts on your own experiences. And if you've been thinking about going to art school yourself, what's been on your mind? Maybe some of us can answer some questions for you, or confirm or deny some fears. I went in pretty blind because I'm kind of overly impulsive sometimes, but this is a choice I wish I'd made more fully informed. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and a wealth of knowledge. Bye!